Okay, it looks like we're live. Uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening uh, to everyone, wherever you may be. Uh, a little, a little early as usual. We are supposed to start at nine o'clock London, but it's a custom that I start about ten minutes early. So uh, the title of uh, the live stream tonight. Uh, Bank of Japan could trigger quantitative tinkering <laughs> by the Fed. So we're going to look at that today. Uh, we're going to wait until uh, more people come on, and then we'll talk about it, and then we'll do the usual uh, Q&A. Uh, I'll also have a few articles and tweets that I think are interesting. So I'm just going to go through who who's here. Daz Smith was here a while ago, said the suspense is terrible. <laughs> I hope it lasts. Uh, we got Uncle Robbie, Spanish John, Honig TM uh, says, good evening. Contrarian Views says, turmoil everywhere. Urban, Urban Sombrero, hello, Urban Sombrero. Yeah, uh, says, Japan and Switzerland could sell some serious quantities of treasuries. Yeah, the Swiss National Bank also has a lot of uh, uh, FANG stocks, NASDAQ stocks. Alain Roy. From Montreal, Olivier, Olivier Leroy from Paris. Uh, Japanese leadership in electronics isn't what it used to be, says Olivier in the 80s. Uh, Ant H is here. Marek Korenda, Kolenda, sorry. A lot. Elias Jones, <laughs> he's got his metal shield. William, uh, William PMCD. Hi guys, if mental illness, drug abuse and crime are to be effectively addressed, what is a better economy than local manufacturer consumer goods? Gold and silver would be the best money. Sounds interesting. Where can I pick up bug seasoning for my turkey crickets meal? Wow. <laughs> Spock 2024, Belly Dance Arabia. Hi, Belly Dance Arabia. Uh, BP, uh, love the picture of Pow. Yeah, the thumbnail. I, I got that from, I just Googled uh, J Pow uh, images. I got that one. I thought that's quite interesting. Chris Conman. Uh, Hi, Chris. He says, hi, Mario and Billy. Yeah, there's Billy, the uh, <laughs> the star of the show, the uh, compliance officer. Uh, So a lot of you here, Mr. B uh, and Silver Task, thank you for being moderators. Uh, there is only one way. Thank you for your super chat. You're always early. <laughs> Very British. I have been promoting Glint. <laughs> I have to go to bed. Uh, have a good stream. God bless. Silver to the moon. Silver squeeze. Thank you. Uh, there's only one way. Um, yeah, today was quite a not a very nice day here. It was wet quite a bit. It rained. So I had a chance to watch a few videos. Uh, I watched a, a couple of uh, I allegedly. Uh, he's really good. I recommend it. Dan, he's in California. He, he, he's he got his uh, feet on the ground. Um, and also Jeremiah Babe. And, and for what I heard from those guys is that things are not great in the U.S. economy, just like they're not great here. And uh, I went shopping with my wife today uh, at the, for the to the supermarket, and she joked, "Oh, you're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna have the husband premium today." Uh, that that's a joke because uh, when the husbands go shopping, apparently they always want to buy more. I, I I actually didn't. I just let her do what she wanted to. But uh, yeah, prices I haven't really noticed that much. They're still okay. But um, I think we spent 127 pounds uh, for the food shopping for more than a week for two of us. Uh, 
and there were a few uh, bottles of wine included in there, but it wasn't a huge shop. Jay Atwal uh, says, Bonsoir, St. Louis uh, 9. Hi, St. Louis. Spock 2024. Yeah, there's Billy. A salad salad. Is it normal to get compliance check if you stopped, stepped into the precious metal market late so you buy bulk? <laughs> uh, good evening, Mario. Greetings from Scotland. Christine Mas Masso, Masset, Masso, <laughs> Thomas Moran. Hi, Thomas. Mr. B. Wilmar de Jong in Holland, stacking in Holland. <laughs> Robert Brownie, yeah, California. Yeah, but I, I mean, it's still a nice place where uh, uh, Dan was uh, filming from. Arthur Quince says, good morning, Mario and Billy. He must be probably in Australia, I'd say, or New Zealand. U.S. is short diesel. Yeah, that's what uh, I, I think it, the Northeast has only 25 days of diesel left, and diesel is very important, of course. Nasser CF says, hello. Greetings from Germany, from Pino uh, Kunschna. Yeah, I, I have a couple of friends. Well, one is a very close friend, fairly close friend. He used to be a client. But we talk a lot, and one other guy is a friend of his. And uh, yeah, things in Germany aren't great. One of them ha has moved from Frankfurt to the countryside, and he's been. He said he's been preparing for this for for decades, and he used to be a banker. <laughs> uh, so, uh, and uh, he he sees the bond market being in a bear market until the year twenty fifty eight, and, and my other friend. He's known this guy since the 80s, and he told me that uh, in the early 90s, he told him that the, the, the bond, bond market would be in the bull market for like 30 years, and he thought he was crazy, and now he's saying it's in the bear market, so I think he, he's got a good track record. Uh, Frank Brown, Lynette Zenk says, how many times can you lie when you don't know the truth? <laughs> Thanks, Mary, for showing us the truth. Uh, that's a good uh, good one. Uh, BOE, no, not stable at all. BOE uh, is in trouble. And uh, today I'm going to show you guys, aside from talking about treasuries in Japan, I'm going to show you a currency that has done better than the dollar this year and also a, a central bank that was way ahead of the curve and started raising rates uh, in the beginning of 2021, and that country's gotten inflation. Uh, it's still relatively high, but it's actually gotten uh, their CPI or inflation down. And uh, you'd be surprised what country that is. So the dollar hasn't been king, really. Carlos Garcia. Hi, Carlos. Scoobyism. Uh, Bubba is calling for 6% 10-year bond. You mean the Buba, the Bundesbank? I don't know who Baba is. Uh, we used to call the Bundesbank, the German Central Bank, uh, the Buba, but uh, not sure who Baba is. Uh, echo, echo, I'm currently reading Mega Threats by Nuriel Rubini. Uh, spare, spare Dime, good afternoon. Okay, it's uh, nine o'clock, London. Joker Alpha Mario Yellen said she was going to buy treasuries by selling treasuries. Yeah, uh, we're going to talk about that. So uh, yeah, uh, about two months ago, maybe a little uh, longer ago, I, I said that uh, I could see a currency crisis in the UK uh, starting in September, because historically, for some reason, you had a lot of currency crisis in the UK around the uh, fall equinox or the autumn equinox. And I had been falling uh, bond yields as well, guilt yields. They were rising very quickly. And, uh, but I said that 
if that were to happen, it would be just the, the first domino. And uh, I was right about calling a sovereign debt crisis in the UK. I, I, you know, I, I would say it's very hard to, to get the timing right in this business. Uh, what you can get is uh, know what the policymakers have been doing, how society has been behaving fiscally, uh, financially, uh, morally. Uh, you can tell that if it continues, it, it will lead to no good. And that's what I've basically been doing for the last 20 years, reading about the Austrian school, which focuses on human action, reading such books as The, the Triumph of Gold by uh, uh, Franz Pick, where he says that um, you don't need to forecast uh, when you see that, uh, you know, people are not, um, as he says here, they were rather the words of Hosea declaring that the children of Sodom and Gomorrah were behaving badly and would thus come to no good, come to no good. They're not any more than Hosea's words were a practical guideposts. So it's very difficult to predict the exact, exact time. Sometimes you get it right, but I, I think it's going to spill over. And, um, uh, the other thing that's been happening is that the Japanese yen, of course, has been very weak uh, this year. And, and why has it been been weak? Well, because um, the Bank of Japan is the only central bank that hasn't uh, stopped QE, the only central bank that hasn't raised rates, and it's the only central bank that is still doing what's called yield curve control. Uh, it's trying to maintain the 10-year JGB yield, uh, the government bond there, uh, at below 25 basis points, which is almost nothing, 0 0.25, <laughs> um, compared to U.S. Treasuries, which are uh, around 4.28 right now, and uh, get, uh, the 10-year gilt is about 4%. The Italian 10 years is almost at 5 And what that does, it, it leads uh, Japanese investors to search for yield elsewhere. And, and that's taken the dollar from around 114 at the beginning of the year. And on Friday, it almost went to 152, uh, like a 30% drop. And this is not sustainable because <laughs> a collapse in currency is never good. So wanted to show you this article here from October 21st, yen intervention sparks speculation over Japan's funding moves. So on uh, Friday afternoon, uh, I think it was about 3.30 London time, the yen dropped from like 100, the dollar, sorry, dropped from 152 to like uh, 144, a, sh a sharp drop. And it looks like it was intervention. It was unusual because it was outside Tokyo hours. But uh, I guess um, the Bank of Japan uh, he, they've got people 24-7 probably in their offices, and they can call the Japanese uh, trading houses in London or in New York and give them orders to, to sell the dollar versus the yen. So let's go through this article a little bit here. It says market participants concerned treasuries could uh, treasuries sold to defend yen. Yes. So <laughs> and that's the the major problem here and that's why i started the live stream talking uh, about the fact that uh, the uk would be just the first domino uh in this sovereign debt crisis so balances at foreign reserves repo pool second highest all time um but um so it says here, signs that Japan has intervened for a second time in a month has Wall Street once again wondering how authorities are funding dollar sales and whether uh, that may fuel more volatility in treasury market. There's speculation that Japan's Ministry of Finance sold securities to fund the move as authorities did in September. Until two weeks ago, foreign central banks had been shed shedding holdings of U.S. treasuries. So... I'm going to stop at that and talk a little bit about this a bit more and see if you guys have any questions uh, before I keep going. So, yeah, the 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 bank, the J Japanese and the Bank of Japan, uh, they they hold about one point 
$1.2 trillion of treasuries. And I think they have about a hundred uh, billion in uh, cash with the New York Fed in the repo account. Uh, so uh, the speculation is that on Friday, uh, this past Friday, they they used about thirty billion uh, of their dollars to sell it and buy yen. Uh, in September, they used twenty billion, so that's fifty billion already. And um, yeah, 50 billion in two months. If you extrapolate that uh, over a year, you know, that's, that's getting towards like uh, 250 to 300 billion, which is quite significant. And, and if they uh, go through the 100 billion they, they have in, in the repo, they have to start selling treasuries. <laughs> so that's a problem. Uh, of course, the Japanese yen might stabilize. We could see the Fed start uh, quantitative tinkering, which we're going to look into what that is. Um, so BP, do you think, uh, who do you think will go down first, the British or the Japanese? Well, it seems to me that they're going down at, at the same time because uh, the yen has dropped 30%. The pound has dropped, I don't know, 20% against the dollar this year. I'm not sure exactly. Uh, the only reason their bond markets in Japan uh, haven't done worse, especially the 10 year, is that they, they keep buying it. They pre keep doing QE. It's a difficult one. They could, yeah, they're, they're going to be very close to each other. But what I think is happening is that uh, the Americans, uh, the Fed's getting worried about it. And I, I think uh, they're showing their, um, how can I say, uh, their, their card. Um, and uh, I think there's a guy, there's an article here. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is from Yahoo Sport, <laughs> but for some, some reason they, it's from Business Insider. It's a, a Fed shift from quantitative tightening to tinkering will emerge as new bull factor for stock market in 2023, Bank of America says. And uh, it also looks like the Fed is going around uh, asking uh, Wall Street and, and uh, also bankers elsewhere in the world if they think uh, the problems in the UK could spill over to, to the US. And I think that's quite significant. So it says here, a shift away from quantitative tightening could be the next bull factor for stocks in 23, 2023, according to BOA. Um, it says, central banks are petrified of market consequences of liquidity withdrawal, uh, Bank of America said. Well, liquidity withdrawal is the quantitative tightening, and that's what the Fed has been doing. Uh, they did drag their feet at the beginning of the year, but it looks like they're doing it now. Um, so it says here, meanwhile, Bank of Japan has been forced to buy bonds this week uh, as the yen plunges to 30-year low. Uh, relative to US dollar. Yeah, they've been buying the 10 year because it went through the 25 basis points. Additionally, European Central Bank is considering, but not yet committing to quantitative tightening. So um, there's another article I wanted to show you. Uh, oh yeah, this is the one. It's, uh, where is it? <sighs> I think it's, uh, let's see, where is it? Yeah, I think it's from uh, Rafi's. Yeah, I will have Rafi on in a week or two. Uh, we have him on once a month, but I, I've got his, uh, the end game investor, which I recommend. Uh, you subscribe, but he, he was saying, this is where I heard this. New York Times reports that Fed officials are scrambling, asking Wall Street guys if the treasury market could seize up like the UK. Uh, the answer they got was yes. So I thought that was interesting. So now we're going to stop this a bit and uh, I'm going to take, uh, take your questions. 
Uh, let's see everything is okay here. Yeah. <sighs> Henrik Schoblom, uh, do you know of any previous nation region period that can compared to Japan and their low rates and deflation for a long time? No, <laughs> you know, they, they've had a, a, what, so, a, over 30 years now of this, but I would argue that it's not deflation really because their currency has been dropping, especially against gold. I think the Japanese yen was around 40, 50,000 uh, per ounce. Uh, back in the early 90s, just after the collapse. And now it's at 250. So yeah, it, it could be a deflation in Japanese yen they have, but in gold, they've got inflation. Um, yeah, and I remember in the early 90s, uh, when I was still working in the city, uh, we were <laughs> the, the big discussion was about Japan. The fact that they wouldn't let their banks go under that uh, they they intervened they you know they they did all they could to keep zombie banks alive and that it would make things even worse but uh unfortunately we we've done the same in the west we've intervened we don't allow anyone uh big to fail anymore uh we keep intervening our governments keep doing uh, fiscal spending uh, we keep doing qe we manipulate interest rates but uh, yeah, I think Japan, of course, you have the um, problem with the, the demographics a, a little bit as well. But I think Japan would have done a lot better if they allowed uh, a lot of the banks to collapse in the early 90s. Uh, and they didn't, though. But no, I, I don't think there's been a situation like Japan, uh, like they've kept this uh, zombie uh, banks and the economy from uh, growing for 30 years. It's just a crazy, crazy situation. Michael K, will the Fed pause or pivot? Well, I, I think they, I think on, on Friday, there was already uh, like a story in the Wall Street Journal, uh, Nicholas Tameros, I think he's a guy, he's a mouth piece for the Fed and the Wall Street Journal. And he spoke about the fact that some Fed governors now are talking about uh, going from 75 basis point hikes to 50. And the market liked that. The market rallied strongly uh, and, and bonds rallied off their lows, even though yields are still quite high. So that, that could be the pivot, just starting to like um, lower, you know, pause, not pause, but Pair back the tightening. <laughs> uh, Matt Bittner says YouTube just played a Japanese tourism ad. <laughs> uh, well, I guess it. <laughs> Dissident agnostic. How come you didn't ask Jason why he thinks the law will exempt Glint from logging all transactions when CBDC arrive? Um, what do you mean by logging all transactions? I, I'm not sure what you mean by that. I, maybe that's why I didn't ask him. I don't really know. Do you mean keeping track, uh, giving the government uh, the records of your transactions? Um, I, I mean, I don't know if they can do that. Maybe they will. Maybe, uh, ne maybe next time, if I, when I speak to him, I can ask him. Alberta man says, howdy, Mara, we cannot get enough of your knowledge. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you for that. 5.13 a.m. in Korea right now. Uh, Sergeant Pepper's tiny bong mix. Have you noticed the lack of stock? Is most bullion, most bullion dealers? I have noticed, not in all of them. For example, Gold Investments, who I have an affiliation with, uh, they've got all the metal you need, uh, gold and silver here in the UK, gold investments. But I've noticed uh, a big bullion deal like Atkinson's. They're, they're, uh, I get emails from them because I've used them in the past 
asking uh, me if I want to sell my gold for a 2% premium. And you go on to some other websites by like Boolean by Post and they're out of stock. And it says on a lot on their um, websites that uh, there will be a three to five working day delays to get your transaction or your metal set because of high demand. So yeah, there's high demand. Um, Ant H says, uh, no gold Britannia's at gold investments on Friday. Yeah. And I think maybe, yeah, that I had, didn't speak to them on Friday. He did tell me, uh, he, uh, Oliver was in Portugal and he asked me to do something. And, and he said that he's getting like a thousand, uh, Br gold Britannia's next week. So yeah, there you go. Even gold investments is having trouble source it. Jose or José, depends because in Portuguese, José, the Spanish say José González. What would trigger the official backing of a BRICS currency in your opinion? Could it be a disorderly selling a treasury collapse value of the U.S. currency? Um, I think what the BRICS are doing, um, if you look at... Uh, especially China and Russia and even India and even Brazil uh, earlier this year, they almost doubled their gold reserves. They're just buying gold. Uh, I think even though Russia said now they're going to stop adding on for the moment, their FX and gold reserves. Yeah, I'm not sure they'll say, oh, we're going to back our currency by gold. I, I think they're just uh, keep accumulating and they're just trying to get, get gonna get away uh, from the dollar as much as possible. They'll still need some dollars, I guess. But um, yeah, talking about BRICS, I'm gonna uh, talk about the currency that I told you that is even stronger than the dollar, and it's not the ruble. Uh, Scott forty nine one forty. What do you think the situation will be with glint during a currency collapse? as most card machines won't work. Well, I, I recommend you watch the interview I did with Jason because he spoke about that because I asked him. I won't go over it again. Um, at the interview, <laughs> I published it today. If you go on my channel, you can see what he says. Um, Chris Conman, thank you for your super chat. If the Fed pauses after this next perceived rate hike, will that be all that is needed? to put a rocket uh, under precious metals. Um, you know, <laughs> that's what everyone's saying. So I, I almost uh, am a little bit, <laughs> not skeptical, but, it, you know, uh, I keep stacking and, and I don't really care too much. Of course, I do care. And I do know that eventually, Precious metals are going to be worth much more in terms of purchasing power than every free currency, the dollar included. But yeah, I'm not sure they will uh, stop after November 1st and 2nd. They'll raise in November 1st and 2nd. What it looks like right now they're trying to telegraph is that they might go down to 50 basis points in December. But uh, that's the other thing I wanted to talk about. These crises we're having the last 20 years since the dot-com bubble uh, crisis, they, they get, their intensity gets bigger and bigger. The crisis gets more, uh, you know, it's a more of a bigger crisis, but also the uh, amount of time they happen and seem to compress and get shorter. So back in uh, September, 2019, we started seeing the repo crisis where the Fed had to do not QE, right? And then by, yeah, seven months later in March, everything unraveled and they had to do real QE, cut rates to zero. The whole world went crazy, right? Treasuries were illiquid. So now uh, I think the current crisis, the sovereign debt crisis started about a month ago uh, in the UK. Uh, so September again, that month. Uh, and I, I think it's uh, it could be 
we could see a, a spreading even before March next year, because I, I expect maybe the crisis to um, be worse, of course, because of a magnitude. It, 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 you know, the dot-com bubble wasn't as bad as the 08 crisis, uh, and, but the 2020 crisis was worse than the 08, I think. So I, I think uh, whatever we get now is going to be worse, but it could happen faster. It could be three months. So we could be very close to it. So I, I think the Fed could also, uh, and this is pertaining to Chris's question, the Fed could say, oh, we're doing this as a one-off because we have to stabilize the liquidity in the treasury market, just like the Bank of England did recently with their not QE. But eventually they will have to go all out because it's inflate or die. Uh, they, they can allow everything to collapse uh, if they want. And that's what would happen if they don't come in and rescue the system again. And uh, from what I see, it looks like central banks don't want that. They don't want the collapse, but it will lead to a collapse because we'll, we'll have a currency or a hyperinflation eventually. Uh, John Lord, thank you for your super chat. Uh, evening, Mario. Uh, hope we are all good and keeping strong. We knew this was coming and sadly we are more ready than most through t uh, tough times coming. I agree, John. And um, yeah, <laughs> it's... Um, I don't think any of us know exactly what will happen, but it's not going to be good. Um, but uh, that's the other thing. There's so much uh, out there uh, here in the UK, all the uh, political circus. There's a lot of talk now, like the the defense minister of Russia talking to the, the US counterpart twice in three days, talking to the British counterparts and this talk of the U.S. 101st, uh, U.S. Army 101st Airborne troops uh, being in Romania, first time in 80 years that they come to Europe. Uh, I think they're trying to scare us a lot. And uh, it is concerning, but I, I think we just need to uh, keep going, not let all this scare us and keep our eye on the ball in terms of our uh, finances. And uh, yeah, do what we do best. <laughs> I can't tell people how to live their lives, but uh, just focus. Yeah, don't be scared. I think that's one good thing. Uh, don't be scared. And um, yeah, these people are just, uh, I think they're desperate because uh, everything is unraveling. So they're trying to create crises where, and then uh, use these as a cover for, their incompetence for years of inflation. Uh, Andrew, Andrew Rama, do you think Silver Squeeze will be successful in draining LBME and COMEX? Do you think this would trigger hyperinflation or collapse of fiat? Well, I think, uh, you know, Silver Squeeze has been successful uh, up to now because there's not much... Uh, silver, uh, registered silver left on COMEX. LBMA, there's still quite a bit, but a lot of the LBMA silver is used to, uh, to cover the uh, SLV. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> I mean, uh, is it any wonder uh, Paul Volcker and the regulators um, basically changed the games of the, the rules of the game on COMEX? when silver is going through $50 in 1980, because that would have meant the collapse of all fiat currencies, because deep down, silver is also very, very important for the monetary system, even though I think it's only the Russian central bank that owns some silver these days. But I saw that even India is buying a lot of silver. Last week, there's some news about that. Uh, oh, you, Mike, thank you for your super chat. Billy, 2024. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Yashir Hassan, what would hap have happened if UK pension funds were not saved by the BOE? Well, one, the first thing is to understand this is not the uh, 
state pension, which every everyone over 65, I think, uh, women might be a little less, they get that. It's not that the national savings, it's not the national pension. Uh, it was uh, final uh, salary pensions from big companies or defined benefit pensions. Well, what would have happened, I think, I think a lot of the banks would have failed because the pension uh, management companies, they borrow from, from the banks to do these um, liability-driven uh, investments, LDI. So the banks would have probably gone to. And uh, people who depended uh, on these uh, pensions being paid every month, uh, they wouldn't have that anymore. They would have had to do with just the, the state pension, which is, I'm not sure how much that is because I'm not of age uh, for the state pension yet. Uh, I think it's 800 pounds a month. So let's say someone that worked for, uh, let's say Barclays Bank, an exec, someone who did really well and was getting maybe, I don't know, 5,000 pounds a month from his final uh, salary pension or maybe three, uh, that would have been gone completely. Uh, so that's how serious it was. Uh, what rules changed to affect the Hunt brothers? Well, the COMEX uh, uh, allowed only uh, only liquidation and selling of uh, silver futures, so they didn't allow people to to uh, to buy uh, to enter new long contracts. So they favored they favored the shorts, and uh, basically there's a huge short squeeze. And the Hunt brothers, though. Um, I think they, I don't know what happened, but they started stacking real silver in the uh, early 70s, like in 1973. But uh, I, I think they got a little bit uh, too greedy with the futures. and uh, But they did cause a, a short squeeze, but they weren't the only ones. So basically, yeah, it was like in the nickel, nickel market in the LME early this year, they <laughs> they well, I don't think COMEX went as far as canceling trades, but they might as well have. And that's why I've always told people, even before the silver squeeze movement started back in uh, February last year, I I've always been telling people the best way to buy silver and gold and to defeat the bankers is to keep stacking physical silver and gold. And uh, that's why I was happy to see the silver squeeze movement start. So uh, I need to show you this uh, about the currency that's actually done better than the US dollar uh, this year. And uh, yeah, it's the Brazilian real. <laughs> it's the currency of where I grew up, <laughs> which is, uh, you know, if you had told me 10 years ago, oh, there's going to be a huge uh, crisis in 2022. You're going to see the pound collapse, the yen collapse. And then someone would have said, well, and the strongest currency will be the ruble and the real. I would have thought, wow, you know, so uh, here you go. So I tweeted today because I, I thought about this and I did this because on Friday, uh, I have some shares of Petrobras is the Brazilian oil company. It did really well. And I looked at some of the news and they had their uh, inflation data and uh, it dropped quite a bit. So I tweeted, move over King dollar, the rise King real. Brazil's currency is up about 5.4% year to date versus the dollar. Why? Maybe it's because the Banco Central do Brazil, the central bank raised rates aggressively. Uh, it should have been from the beginning of 2021. Uh, real rates are positive for real and not via break break even rates rubbish. So let's open this up. Uh, I did this uh, little thing here. So we can see this is in Portuguese, but it, it, this is the inflation year to date in 2022. Uh, and Brazil has got one of the lowest here of the G20, as you can see. Uh, this is not annual. That's why the US one is at 5.8. But look at Brazil, 4.1. And this is the annual inflation in Brazil, or CPI. It, it topped at 12%, uh, and it's now around 7 
And uh, look, it, it started going up here at the end of 2020 and accelerated in 2021. But what I wanted to show you guys is uh, why I think Brazil is, <laughs> the currency in Brazil is doing well and, and why I think uh, their uh, inflation is dropping. Just notice how almost in the beginning of 2021, Brazil started, the central bank started raising rates and they've gone from 2% all the way up to 14. So with their uh, CPI at seven, it means that their real rate, you get a real rate of return in Brazilian reais of 7%. And uh, <laughs> here's the currency. So we started the year here, the dollar was like at 545 or something. And now it's at 516. So, so much for the dollar milkshake theory, then uh, I would say um, the Brazilian currency uh, is doing quite well. So there we go. And uh, my, my uh, this is not to brag about Brazil, I, <laughs> even though I, I couldn't care less that much. Uh, I mean, I don't live there anymore. And I'm not the kind of guy who waves flags. It's just to show that uh, the Brazilian central bank, even though I don't like central banks, they did the right thing. They raised rates from two to uh, 14%, and they seem to be getting control of inflation. Uh, and that's why their currency is doing quite well. In the year that currencies uh, have been <laughs> really suffering against the dollar. Uh, Mr. Ashford, token of appreciation for all your hard work. Oh, thank you very much for your super chat. And you're welcome. Uh, this is not a dollar milkshake it's just water or it could be a, a brazilian caipirinha uh, do you guys know what a caipirinha is well it's the uh it's the sugar cane uh alcohol mixed with uh, lime and sugar it's a typical brazilian drink caipirinha it's with cachaça <laughs> maybe that's uh that's what's working not the dollar milkshake <laughs> uh matt bittner the hunt brothers should have brought bought silver mines yeah even though you know they took a delivery from Comex in the seventies a lot, and they they actually used to take delivery of the silver on Comex in the U.S. and then fly the silver to Switzerland on their private jets. Uh, BP, if silver is allowed to find its natural price, would move silver? Would more silver mines be able to open, increase supply? Yeah, they would. And uh, the thing is that it takes uh, quite a few years to develop a, a mine. So it's, uh, yeah, it will eventually, you know, that's how commodity cycles go. You know, you get the prices rising and, and then um, mining uh, picks up. People exploit more of that commodity and then you get the supply and it, and it brings the price down. Very cyclical, but silver has been uh, manipulated. Uh, the price has been manipulated for so long that uh, there's very few uh, pure silver plays out there. And uh, there hasn't been much silver mines um, like started. So it would take some years. Abby Shylock, yeah, <laughs> yeah, two when you're legless, yeah, the Kaipirinha. I think they call, there's one called Kaipiroska, Kaipirovska, they, they put vodka instead of the Kashasa. Uh, speaking of Brazil, uh, does a Brazilian ADR perform better than the currency, when the currency is stronger? Um, yeah, I, I haven't really uh, 
worried too much about that. I have the the uh, Petrobras uh, ADR. It pays a very big dividend. Uh, you'd have to like uh, see. I mean, um, let's say you buy a Brazilian company and it's up five percent so far this year. Um, in let's say you, well, I, I think the ADR though is, is quoted in dollars, so it probably accounts for the currency. But if you buy a stock in Brazil, in in in, in reais, uh, some people are able to do it. Some maybe not. Uh, if the stock, let's say, loses four and a half percent, but the the currency is going up four and a half percent, then you don't lose anything. Uh, Jim Millward uh, from the UK says, I've converted two people and they're now addicted to stacking because they understand. And the other thing I would say about stacking, uh, because before 2002, the only gold I had ever owned was this here, my, my uh, wedding ring, which is white gold, 18 carat. So be before 2002, I, I had no idea how it felt to hold a gold coin or a silver bar. And I think that's why it's important to stack because you realize how special <laughs> those uh, metals are, especially when you buy them in coin, coin as a coin or as a bar. Uh, and it's one of the reasons why it's hard to get, get rid of it. Uh, unless of course you, you have an emergency. <clears throat> Uh, thousands of silver. I have a friend in the junior miners exploration field. He says many juniors are closing shop uh, with these spot prices and increased inflation, not worth mining, which is a shame, which is a shame because I, I think it's going to be the place to be mining in the next few years. And that's why I've been making more uh, sponsored videos for these companies. I do about one one a month now. I know a lot of people don't like that, but um, I think a lot of people do as well because they want to know what's going on and some interesting opportunities. And I don't see why not. And I believe in it. <laughs> All the companies that I do videos about, I have some of them too uh, for, in my uh, portfolio of miners. Uh, Elliskins, Comex, Paper Metals, how long before finally the penny drops and people system wakes up? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, um, I think we're getting closer and closer to that because we're already seeing the premiums uh, really high uh, for silver coins. Maybe not for thousand ounce bars, but for silver eagles and uh, even for uh, gold coins, they're getting high. Silver Tass says Boris no longer in the race. That must be uh, fresh news because from what I'd heard, he was still in it. But um, let's have a look if it's come out something. Go to the Oh yeah, he's pulled out. You're right. So, so the guy uh, who put us in this financial mess, all the debt, all the inflation, i.e., uh, Rishi Sunak, <laughs> he's gonna be the guy <laughs> who's supposedly gonna take us out of that because he was the Chancellor of the Exchequer, which is like the Treasury Secretary during 2020, 2021, and up to 2022. And he was the guy who borrowed like hundreds of billions of pounds to keep everyone at home, uh, not doing anything in 2020, 2021. He, uh, yeah, <laughs> he, he uh, con concocted all these uh, uh, business loans, 50,000 pounds, of which there was huge uh, fraud 
you know, people opening companies just to claim 50,000 and taking that money and, and going on holidays or uh, buying a new car. So this is the guy who's supposed to solve the problems we have, I think is a disgrace, to be honest. But I'm not surprised because uh, politics is politics, right? They're all uh, World Economic uh, Forum uh, guys. <laughs> it wouldn't have mattered who, who it was. But uh, what I think this is going to lead to, and I don't want to dwell too much on politics, is that we're going to have a general election very soon. And uh, labor <laughs> labor going to come to power. It's not going to be any better. Uh, BP, uh, don't so you don't think silver mining has peaked? And if silver prices were to naturally operate, mines can open and eventually. Um, are you putting, uh, I think, a, a, a lot into my mouth? Into my, you know, uh, all I said is that yes, they are. It's a shame some of them are closing, especially the junior exploration ones, because they're running out of cash. But what I mean is that when silver prices, and I think silver prices will go up eventually, when they start going up, then that sector is going to pick up. Uh, but uh, not until then, I think. But uh, that's why it, it's tricky to find the right junior exploration mining a silver company. And there's not too many of them around because silver is usually mined as a byproduct. Uh, of uh, other metals. But yeah, definitely, uh, you could see a boom, you could see a lot of people getting into uh, the silver uh, exploration business. Um, yeah, and, and maybe a, a lot of the companies that are in that sector right now, might not survive, but some might, and they will, they could do very well. Uh, do you think a revolution will occur <laughs> before Christmas? Uh, well, anything's possible. If ever there was going to be one, yeah, it, it could be uh, this year. Yankee stacking. Uh, great streamer, and I agree with you on mining stocks, provided you pick carefully and only speculate with small numbers. Yeah, royalties are good. Royalties are, uh, they... Um, they're not um, liable to the mining costs. They just buy shares of companies. And if they buy, let's say, 100 properties, not buy, but if they put, uh, you know, if they lend as a royalty company to 100 projects, let's say um, 10 of those projects fail, they still have the 90 projects. So I agree, uh, royalties is... Um, a, a good idea and but I, i'm not even sure there's too many silver royalty companies but uh, a lot of the ro gold royalty companies might have silver properties copper stocks yeah, I think commodities in general are going to do quite well, even though I think gold and silver are going to outperform general commodities, just like they did in the 1970s. But general commodities, I think, will outperform uh, the general stock market. That's just my thought. <laughs> oh, we got 15 minutes to go. I think I've got, let's see, I've got some other things here. Uh, let's see. Uh, I got the Brazilian real thing. Oh yeah, let's have a little look at UK housing. And I'm not sure where this place is. Uh, some of you might know, 
So this guy tweeted today, there are regional property bu bubbles bursting. In 2016, this house sold for 55,000. So this is not London because you couldn't get, uh, I think, a, a house for that price here. Uh, the sellers listed it in 2022 for 105,000. They nearly doubled the price over six years. Uh, this same property has dropped 24% down to 80,000. By 2023, 20, that will drop down to 55. So uh, this is it, uh, UK. It's in Yorkshire. So they've brought, uh, they uh, put the house on the market for 105 and then they lowered it to 90 and now they've lowered it to 80. So it's starting, you know. Uh, I was hearing uh, from, Jeremiah Babe and uh, I allegedly, uh, Dan, they're saying that mortgage rates now are above 7%. Their people, their mortgage rates above 7%. And, and what uh, Dan said was true. You know, 15, 20 years ago, it would be okay because you'd buy a house for 150,000. But when the house houses now are a million, 7% uh, is going to be really tough. To, to afford when the ha when house prices weren't as high, you could afford 7% on, on a relatively small mortgage. So yeah, I, I think this is in Yorkshire, of course, this uh, uh, bubble bursting there, but it, it will spread all over the UK, I think. Uh, and also for uh, properties in central London, because they've gone up a lot. High low blood pressure. <laughs> nice to see you. Better late than never. Uh, Greg Austin is stacking chocolate coins. Yeah, there is a problem. You eat them. <laughs> I would eat them. Starting to rain again outside. Uh, Neil Moy says, Dan wants to interview you. Uh, is that Dan from I allegedly? Well, you know, my uh, email is on the on my channel. He can go on on uh, about me and uh, he can click there and get my email and contact me. BP, you don't think silver mining is being, it's the same question you asked me. I answered that already, I think, BP. Uh, Chris Conman, thank you again for your super chat. Peter Schiff had a live stream two weeks ago, and I, I posed a question on eliminating all central banks. He agreed and said we need a free market system. You can hear his answer on it starts at 40 minutes. Uh, uh, that's good because uh, I've interviewed him, I think, twice on my channel. <laughs> and I actually uh, asked him, you know, shouldn't we end the Fed? And at the time, he, he said no, <laughs> that we needed it. So I'm glad he's changed his mind on central banking. <laughs> good idea to hide gold coins amongst chocolate ones, I guess so. <laughs> Uh, I, I never thought of that. It's not pretty here, uh, Indy. It's dark already and it's rainy. Yeah, I was listening to Jeremiah Babe today. I like him. I, 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 isn't he moving to Kentucky or something? I think he's still in Palm Springs, though. Alain Roy, is silver money? Well, Alain, all I would say is, how do you say money in French? Argent. <laughs> so that I, hopefully that answers your question. <laughs> Uh, 
<laughs> BP, when UK real estate collapses, gold and silver spikes, would you buy property in Mayfair? Uh, not sure I'd have enough gold and silver to buy a property in Mayfair, but you never know <laughs> if it's like the Weimar Republic and uh, you can buy, um, you know, a nice property in Mayfair for a few ounces, then maybe, yeah, <laughs> who knows? And I could uh, <laughs> hire a butler, I guess. <laughs> Meta Muppet, <laughs> as good as gold, Australia, Jeremiah Bay, Peter Schiff, among very few others is the only reason I come back to YouTube. Thank you. Yeah, he, he it's a nice place. He was walking uh, around today or yesterday. There's some people doing some yoga and he was by, by a marina. It's nice. How's our friend Billy? There he is. <laughs> He's doing well. Echo Echo says, I find myself getting angrier and angrier all the time. The way things are going, I'm now constantly trying to be less angry. I agree. Uh, I, I try to uh, laugh it off because you could get very angry with what's going on. Um, it's not easy. Don't. Uh, to, it's easy to fall into that trap. Anger, I don't think, is a very good emotion, of course. Uh, Matt Bittner, uh, Gonzalo Rira started a new U YouTube channel. Yeah, I'm not sure what why he started a new YouTube channel. I guess one is for uh, like uh, chats with other people and one is just him. But uh, I listened to him on... Um, I think it was, what's his name again? <laughs> it's that UK politician. He always wears a hat. He interviewed him recently. The mother of all talk shows. Uh, forgot his name now. Ruby's too. Have you watched Neil McCoy Ward? I don't watch him that much. Uh, I've heard of him. <clears throat> uh, I don't read the COT report every week. And why is that? Yeah, even though it could be important for the uh, paper price. Because I think uh, eventually uh, gold and silver will reflect their true value. And uh, I know it's frustrating because of uh, COMEX, because of the paper game, but I, I don't, yeah, it, I don't let it get to me and like keep focusing on the COT report, you know, to see what's going on and like worrying about it. Even though uh, I'm aware of what's going on there, I, I know now that I know that the, the commercials uh, and the, uh, the hedge funds are are short gold, and usually they're uh, they're not the same way. And also the the producers they have a usually a big, very big uh, short position, but now it's a small short position. So it looks like the people who are long and taking delivery are the big private money, and maybe even some smaller people. So. It is possible it could trigger a big short squeeze. Uh, all I'm trying to say is that, yeah, the, it, it is important, but eventually um, what will matter is not COMEX, but having physical. Scott49140, can I ask? I bought a, an 1887 double florin recently. If it's four shillings, what would that be in pence? Uh, so a florin is uh, two shillings. <laughs> so a double florin is four shillings. That's right. That would be uh, 48 pence. So because a florin is a shilling is 12 pence and a florin is 24. So a double florin is 48 pence. And, and there used to be 
240 pence to the pound. Uh, so there you go. Carlos Garcia, what will happen to your channel after our payday, AUAG revaluation? Or will you become an exchange banker? Uh, I, I try not to think about that. Uh, I think uh, I'm going to keep doing what I do, even if that were to happen. Uh, who knows? Or maybe I'll be doing more uh, videos about uh, mining opportunities because the, the mining companies will be the banks of the future. They will, well, yeah, they will, they'll be producing the money of the future if what happens, uh, what I think will happen will happen. So I think the channel will still be here. <laughs> Get Alex Jones on Emma Date. I, I mean, I've watched Alex. I haven't watched him that much recently, but uh, I started watching Alex Jones a long, long time ago, <laughs> over 20 years ago. And uh, yeah, it's uh, he gets angry. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I think it's a joke what they're trying to do to him. But uh, there you go. Echo, echo, does the government or BOE decide how much of the gold to sell? Uh, I, I think the uh, gold, the UK gold reserve is owned by the treasury. So it would be the government. What the Bank of England would do, they would execute the trade. Shehan, how does uh, the uh, exchange rate affects uh, UK bond market, GBP to USD? Well, <laughs> you saw how, you know, when the, it depends, you know, if it's a controlled decline of the pound, it won't affect the bond market that much. And it hasn't in the last 10, 15 years. But with inflation that we've had now, and the fact that uh, the pound was dropping very quickly, um, yes, it led to the sell-off in the UK bond market. Matt Bittner, yeah, I've had Mark Faber on a couple of times. Maybe I'll see if I can get a hold of him again. He's an interesting guy. A uh, shilling in Victorian time was 12 pence. I'm not sure. I haven't really done that much research, but it was quite a bit of money. So this is, a. Uh, have got actually uh, a florin here. A florin is like the half dollar, kind of the same size. And uh, so a shilling is like a quarter. So it was a fair amount of uh, purchasing power, I would say. Uh, Robert Kenahan, I saw that house <laughs> it, right by the uh, airport as well. 1.6 million, three bedroom, one, one bathroom. Yeah, <laughs> I think Dan said, uh, you will know something's wrong with me if I start drinking every day. That's a sign. And he said the other sign would be if I bought this house, there's something wrong with me. Uh, uh, Silver Tax says, thank you for all your hard work tonight, uh, keeping us up to date. I try my best, Silver Task. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Billy is disciplined, Pablo. He's, he's a good dog. Belly Dance Raven says, anger is wasted energy. Read the Bible, watch a movie. Sing a song, etc. Yeah, read a book, yeah, or the Bible. All right, I'll just uh, uh, Jane DR, can you buy gold using Bitcoin? Uh, it, I think some dealers accept Bitcoin. Why not? Um, uh, you can uh, 
It depends on the, the precious metals dealer. Are uh, you welcome, BP? Uh, L skins, some people say once if we get a crash, you might be able to buy a, a house with 50 ounce of silver. What's your thoughts on that? It's possible, 50 ounces. Uh, especially, let's say the uh, gold-silver ratio goes to 15. That would mean you'd need about, let's see, three and a half ounces of, of gold. And back in the Weimar uh, Republic in Berlin, I think someone was able to buy a, a nice property with uh, a few ounces. So yeah, 50 ounces uh, sounds right. Okay, um, so I'm going to call it a day <laughs> or a night. <laughs> uh, thank you uh, for showing up and participating. Uh, and if you're new to the channel, think about subscribing. And uh, I wish you, uh, I wish everyone a great uh, week. Uh, and also, uh, yeah, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Take care.